Good afternoon, Britannia, and hello to the rest of the world. Welcome to 2CTV and the first live update of the day. You might be wondering where I was last couple of days. Well, yesterday I was away. A couple of days ago we were around, but I didn't do a live update. Uh, we're actually in the process of finalizing the new 2CTV studios uh, with the new team and the new shows and new presenters and everything coming up for you guys. We're going to have all the different types of shows, obviously entertainment and uh, documentaries, history, debate shows, and of course... The breaking news updates on YouTube will continue as usual. First things first, let's talk about what happened over the weekend, especially uh, Saturday night and yesterday in uh, Tel Aviv in Israel. Uh, the protests against Netanyahu continued. Uh, we are finally seeing some division, uh, despite the fact that uh, the majority of the Israelis are generally united over uh, their, obviously their opposition towards against Islamists, but of course in regards to the international uh, pressure on the IDF. But having said that, there are still an element of the political left and the liberal side in Tel Aviv uh, who are obviously making, putting more pressure on Netanyahu and his cabinet. We are seeing some tensions escalating. It's not really surprising, but it is a little bit sad to see this because, as I said, for decades and decades, uh, the, the, the nation of Israel always basically had this pride that we are generally united. We're not going to go against each other. But of course, the whole world is becoming globalized. So anything that happens uh, in the West is also happening across the world, including in Israel. So we have a couple of videos for you guys uh, from what happened in Israel over the weekend in Tel Aviv. Because part of the tensions are natural because, you know, people from both sides, you know, the, the ones who want the idea of to go more robust. And of course, the ones who are more liberal minded saying just make a deal with the Islamists. But there's also an element of those who have been paid to cause chaos during this protest. Again, let's not forget about that. Let's go to the first video. Uh, this is actually a, a, a part of a clash, unfortunately. One car, they were, they were having a massive row. The car drove and unfortunately hit a number of the other protesters. <laughs> Absolute scenes, chaotic scenes uh, from uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, just a quick heads up, I can see a couple of people already spamming the live chat, including Mikey B. It's the final warning, do not spam the live chat. Of course, people want to have a conversation and uh, be, have some sort of interactive live stream. Uh, obviously, otherwise, it will just block the whole, whatever you want to call it, the live chat. Um, as I said, there is an element of the natural anger <clears throat> and tensions rise as usual. That's normal. But let's not forget those who are there to cause trouble as well. Now, there are crazy people on all sides. We know that. And they, just generally speaking, political spectrums in general. But those who are putting more pressure on the liberal side in Tel Aviv to continue to cause disruptions is a little bit strange because they are creating this narrative that every single family member of hostages are on the side of the protesters. That's not really been proven because only a few of the families have joined these radical protests. That's the point. It's not everybody. Now, I don't even blame the families of hostages for being frustrated on a personal level. Of course, they want anything to be done for their own relatives to be freed. But there are those who are in the state and in government. They have to look after the, the whole country and they have to make sure that uh, they don't really put anything else in jeopardy. Because again, if you make a deal with thugs and terrorists, they're, they're going to do it again. But that's whole, the whole thing is also, to be fair, has been delayed anyway from the Islamist side. And we're going to talk about the, the, the role of the Iranian regime in this uh, throughout the day as well. Let's go to the next video.
As you can see, uh, we did hear a number of reports coming uh, from uh, Tel Aviv over the weekend that uh, a number of people have been injured, uh, but also a, a number of people have been arrested uh, from, from all sides, actually. <laughs> the police didn't really want to mess around uh, because, of, of course, they have national security to worry about. Now they have to worry about the streets of Tel Aviv. It doesn't really help the whole situation anyway. You can protest. Protest is good. Mm, democracy. Good. Good for you. But again, when you have both sides coming at each other, and fighting, it, first, it's not civilized anyway. That's not what we should do. But also, it doesn't really help the situation when it comes to the international community putting more pressure. Uh, anyway, so that's what uh, we currently have. Uh, what is going on with uh, the live chat? Everyone's kicking off. <laughs> Why are people talking about Paul Thorpe? <laughs> is he in the live chat? I'm guessing he is. I don't know. Um, but there is there is a reality of, of course, uh, those who want things to be divided in Israel. And it makes sense. It makes sense why they want to do this. We've got the likes of George Soros and all the other nutters from Open Society funding all these leftist groups and the Islamist groups. They are still literally sending in terrorists in, into Israel to cause chaos and they keep getting arrested. It's because Israel has been too soft. To their own, their own neighbours. We literally had people from Gaza go into Israel until the 7th of October freely to go and study, to work, to get health treatment. And now they're wondering why it's all chaotic. Don't open your doors. To nutters. That's what happens. Of course, Israel has now learned their lesson, but uh, that's a whole different problem because we have our own issues in the West. Let's go to the next video. So, of course, this was uh, slightly the, the more symbolic part of the, the protest uh, themselves. Uh, the, the issue that we're currently having is when I went to Tel Aviv, I'm obviously as part of 2CTV, to report for you guys from, I think it was one of the first few marches and rallies that the families of hostages had with people in Tel Aviv. That was very well organized. It was very nice. It was very polite. It was very civilized. And there are still people having debates. In Tel Aviv, some people were more right wing, some people were more left wing, but it was fine, and the police had a good time. It was easy, but that's not what we're seeing now. I mean, there's some, it's kind of a, a smaller element in terms of the crowd who are there to cause trouble. But unfortunately, these things happen, and the longer the IDF and obviously the Israeli government go without actually finishing the Rafah operation, the harder it will get for them. As, as I said, the, the, the IDF are the only military force in, in, and defense force in the, in the whole world that is more scrutinized than anybody else. They are still they're getting called genociders anyway <laughs> at this point. At the same time, they are still delaying the operation because they don't want many of the civilians in Gaza to be hurt. I'm like, well, what are you going to do about this now? Because you have to go in somehow. I, I'm not really in favor of dropping things and like doing airstrikes because that's also problematic. But... Go in slowly and sort out the operation. They do need an element of support from people in Gaza, some people in Gaza who claim to be against Hamas. But where are they? Are they helping them? We're not, we're not really sure. Next video. Absolute shambolic situation going on uh, almost every weekend now in Tel Aviv. Um, they are not going to stop until basically they put enough pressure on Netanyahu to either resign or call an election. That's a stupid thing to do anyway. <laughs> I'm not even the biggest fan of Netanyahu's government, but cabinet. Uh, but that's not really how you do things in a democracy. Anyway, we have that situation going on. There's some reaction in the live chat. Uh, what is going on? Why are people talking about... Well, here's this guy talking about EDL. <laughs> EDL is looking for crusade. <laughs> if only. Um, bring back the crusade, guys. Bring back the crusade. <laughs> In the name of the Pope. Um, so, Hans Archive says, 
there is a there's threat of ex uh, the existence of Israel, and yet the woke lefty mindset is dominated. Well, good luck, good good luck with those Islamists who hate you, no matter what they will take care of you. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they, you can't really. It's imagine all these people who are going around the progressive progressive they're actually regressive illiberal regressives calling themselves progressive liberals going around pretending to be allies do they not do their homeworks are they deluded or do they know they're lying to us that they're saying we're yeah yeah we're friends with islamists you know we're, yeah, we're gonna work together everything's gonna be great and they're gonna integrate and uh, yeah there's not gonna be any sharia sharia law no everything's gonna be fine they're gonna come for you next stop it sonia says i am so frustrated ah, i feel that it is so shocking what is happening in our country with the policing, the local governments, the education system, the legal system, everything at this point. Even the arts, even the, even the culture departments have been taken over. I agree. Sonia. What's going on? Anthony says, so you can still record as a media or have you got to join a union? So we still have to join a union. I mean, we, we are... We're not going to join a union in that sense, but we are going to get, with a new 2CTV operation, we're going to have to join associations to actually get a press pass um, because the previous press pass agreement that I had, arrangement I had, was with different media companies, but is now in, as independent, obviously, new media outlet that we're setting up. Of course, until now, it was just mostly me, at home studios, but now that we're going to the new studio and the new team and everything else, it's going to be a new media company. So... Uh, we are going to be setting up um, new press passes, hopefully, but they are going to make it difficult for us to get it. I know that. Of course, they're going to make it difficult for us to get it. The Westminster lobby, who are basically a closed club of the mostly the press and then, of course, the broadcast media. So you got the likes of the, the, the Telegraph and the Times and the, the Daily Mirror and Daily Mail and all those guys going hand in hand with the likes of Sky News and BBC News and Channel 4 News and ITV News and GB News and all the other nutters. They are stopping us from getting press passes. They are stopping us from going to press conferences. And unfortunately for them, we are, I've, I've got connections anyway. So I still get into press conferences. I still go wherever I want to go, <laughs> uh, with or without a uh, press pass. Uh, but we are going to be obviously using associations to join, to basically get a press pass without becoming trade unionists. I am never going to surrender to trade union movements because this is the most stupid thing that humanity has come up, come up with. It makes no sense. Collectivism is evil. Stop the collectivism. Um, Jane says, I see you've got some Marxists on. Probably hope not hate. Hello, hope not hate, people. <laughs> I'm very much in favor of both hope and also I'm against hate. So technically I am pro hope not hate. <laughs> Oh, one of these days, they're going to come. <laughs> going to knock on the door. So, what are we doing in... in um, <clears throat> Stephen, what does Stephen say? Political Islam and the Liptards. I do love Liptards. Is a match made in hell. This should be on a t-shirt, like merchandise. Yeah. Raven says, I really think something strange is happening with the government. It's like they are trying to replace... I think they're, they're also trying to lose. <laughs> That's the other problem. It's not, by the way, it's not government. Can, can we stop talking about government? <laughs> because it's not really just government. Governments come and go. Governments are just the government ministers who we elect as MPs. It's a su successive governments because it's the state. We've already been infiltrated by the mindset that wants open borders and wants multiculturalism and wants basically more globalization. So it doesn't really matter what government minister you have right now. The state is doing it anyway. Because they have decided to go through the back door. They're, they're becoming civil servants. They're becoming NHS workers, BBC workers. So it doesn't matter if you just elect someone who's relatively sound as a politician, as an MP. Because the people who are making the real decisions are behind the scenes. They're civil servants and bureaucrats. They've already taken over all the government departments, all the arts areas and everything. Media, academia and all the other areas. So it's very difficult for... You know, a new party or a new politician or a new political leader to just come and change things. You can, technically, on paper, but it will take a long time because of the way the structure of our system is built. It's not a presidential system, so you can't really just randomly, freely get rid of people like Javier Millet is doing in Argentina. I wish it was as easy as that, but it's not, unfortunately. 
Uh, a lot of people are uh, watching the live stream, but only 578 people have clicked on the like button. So I'm, I'm going to assume the rest of the people who have not clicked like hate my face. So thank you, guys. <laughs> or if you like it, click on the like button. <clears throat> White Angel says, uh, Maya, can you explain why Tice is involved with Hope Not Hate? Well, the, the criticism is that uh, Tice and Reform UK are caving in and surrendering to Hope Not Hate. Not necessarily that he's working for them. Uh, this criticism in Westminster is that Every time Hope Not Hate put pressure on Reform UK, they get scared and he basically does what they are they want him to do, which is to remove candidates who are controversial. Um, I think the fear that they have, Reform UK, is they want to be, but because they are now basically the third party at this point, the third main party. The moment you become a mainstream party, which is basically what everybody wants, to win, you have to now play the game. You have to become mainstream by definition. They want to avoid what UKIP went, went through. If you remember the days of 2012, 2013, 2014, where you had you know, a, a couple of fruity candidates, let's just say, <laughs> saying controversial stuff, and then they had to get cancelled and they had to get there removed. Um, and it was, it was very difficult for Nigel Farage and those guys to manage that team because there were so many candidates. UKIP was doing so well. They had all these local councillors and everywhere. It was very hard. Uh, so every every week they had to get rid of some candidate. So reform UK, I think, in order to prevent that, they are just trying to just get rid of anybody who's basically controversial, which is not really a good idea because you're surrendering to mob rule. You know, if 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 a candidate, for example, for example, says something really bad, or has terrible policy ideas, just get rid of them anyway. Whether hope not hate or anybody else is putting pressure on you, try not to have them in the first place. That would be a good idea. That would be a good start. But if you have already supported people as part of your team, with conviction, have the conviction. Do your vetting beforehand. Make sure they are solid. Don't allow the enemy to put pressure on you uh, for you to surrender. So this is the, the, the problem that they're currently going through. And it's the early days of Reform UK, I guess. So they are trying to basically uh, be mainstream, but they're not used to it. They are still a young party. <clears throat> Imran Khan probably related to Sadiq Khan. Maya, you are a failed MP. I am not because I've never been an MP to fail. Also, MP is with capital M, capital P. And Maya is capital M and you missed the Y. You are Iranian. Well, I'm Persian. Okay, okay. Iranian is nationality. Persian is an ethnicity. You are Iranian, so cross, Persian, yep. British is not ethnicity, it's nationality. That's, y yes, I know. I'm British. Nationality-wise, I'm British. Not ethnicity. I'm not Anglo-Saxon. I, I didn't just go to Essex to get a sunbathing or something. <laughs> I didn't just come from Benidorm and just tanned. I'm secretly really Anglo-Saxon white. No. Ethnicity is Persian. Nationality is British. Idiot. Uh, multiculturalism is okay when it benefits you, but not the others. No. Multiculturalism is terrible. And I do not advocate for multiculturalism because I don't do multiculturalism. I have one culture, and that's the British culture. Multiracialism? I can't help this. I was born like this. I know, beautiful, gorgeous. I know, I can't help it. It's not my fault I'm beautiful. <laughs> Ethnicity is Persian. That's never going to change. I, I can never be Anglo-Saxon. But of course, my nationality is British, but of course my culture, because we live in this country, you have to support and live under one umbrella. Britannia. Okay. Hope that helped, Imran Khan. Come back to the next lesson, ne lesson next week. Ethan says, are you hiring? for only fans <laughs> i'd like to work for you with a video for, uh, videography and design experience how do i get in touch i am not on social media that's not a good start is it? <laughs> fyi so can't dm anyway um there's an email address in the description but we, we've just hired everyone now um I, I'm, I'm already going broke literally i've lost everything <laughs> i put everything i had into this new project with the new studio um, and the fact that I'm still keeping YouTube as the, the breaking news updates, live streams for you guys, well, we're going to have that. I'm going to have to need your support because we have to work this together because I've decided to step up the game to actually beat, properly defeat the mainstream corporate media. Um, but I don't like handouts or anything, that not that sort of nonsense. We're going to have a nice product. We're going to have a great platform with all the educational and also entertainment and all the fun stuff for you guys. Um, and we're going to beat Netflix. Cancel your Netflix accounts. Sign up to TCTV Plus soon, very soon. We'll give you some information uh, towards the end of the week. 
PM Talk says, stop giving jobs to Muslims in any sector. <laughs> any sector. <laughs> They're going to be on benefits. <laughs> English people are too soft like Jesus. Don't be like Jesus. They will take over. Don't be like Jesus. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the problem is because the, the, the people from different cultures are here. Then, then if you don't have jobs, then they're going to go on benefits. Unless you're going to do expulsion like Spain did a few centuries ago. Wheel Opinion says, uh, Maya, what happened to your live stream on Saturday? You went on the, across the road and we didn't see you after that. Yeah, I came back. There was another follow-up live stream after that, obviously. I survived because the, the police were trying to arrest me for reporting from the protest from the, the buffer zone. It makes no sense. There's no consistency when it comes to the Metropolitan Police. You saw what I did two weeks ago, last week, whenever it was. When I was actually in between the two protests, counter protests and protests, and the police were supporting me, they were protecting me. But the other day, well, a few days, a couple of days ago, they were like, nope, we're going to arrest you. So I had to deal with that. But then I came back, we continued the live show. Uh, so that's, that was the drama. <laughs> Big shout out to Jane Miller for her super chat support. Thank you very much. Hopefully, when we launch TCTV Plus, um, you don't have to worry about. Um, super chat stuff and donations because uh, I'd rather if we just if you want to show support and um, sign up to 2CTV plus it's gonna work it's, it's gonna be worth it don't worry Yusuf says instead of winning the votes from people every time you bring people to vote for you forever but I mean that's this should have been the uh, Tony Blair's strategy I guess since uh, 1997 um, Euless Karen love that name fake journalist can't even get an NUJ because he spreads fake news. 2CB Tech Media student, fake journalist. Can't even get an NUJ because you just said that. You just copy and paste the same sentence because he spreads fake news. 2CB Tech. You literally copy and <laughs> It's the most Karen thing ever. <laughs> You're going to copy and paste the copy. <laughs> oh, you less Karen. I'm not really sure you know how journalism works, but it's okay. It's okay. Hide behind your keyboard, keyboard warriors. Um, <laughs> are you a proud Zionist? Well, I'm not Israeli, so I can't be a Zionist, but I'm, I'm in favor of, well, Zionism is Israeli national, and na nationalism. I'm in favor of nationalism for all nations, so I'm in favor of I'm pro Zionism, just like how I'm pro British nationalism, German nationalism, even Australian nationalism. <laughs> Poor Australians. I make fun of them a lot on the channel. To be fair, not as much as the Welsh. I love the Welsh, by the way. <laughs> Don't cancel me. Um, Mr. D says, big difference, you were in Parliament Square. That's not how it works. That's not how policing works. That's not how the Constitution works. That's not how the regulation for the Metropolitan Police works. It's not about location. <laughs> People need to read how the police works, of course, uh, before saying things. Uh, um, <clears throat> more trolls. Give me more trolls. Where's Karen? Ah. <laughs> uh. The Jedi says that uneducated people in comments, in the live comments, uh, causing trouble. They don't even know why they're here because they, they want to unintentionally support the channel. Every, they keep doing this. They complain about me being successful, but then they keep clicking on every video, watching the whole thing, leaving comments. You know, you're helping with the ad revenue, right? <laughs> morons, absolute morons. Why is... Maya, I'm a big fan. Sorry for spamming. Why, why are you apologizing? Well, don't spam in the first place. Are you spamming now? You're literally spamming now. You're just literally spamming now by apologizing. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to ban you, Joshua. <laughs> what is going on today? Is everybody crazy today? Where are the sane people? Okay, Joshua was just trolling. So he was just uh, spamming. So he's now been banned. And he's now been deported. Euless Karen is my favorite name, by the way. John says, you less Karen, nobody's jealous of you, and you're not a journalist, you're a fantasist weirdo. <laughs> oh, amazing. Oh, uh, yeah, I missed the super chat, I just realized. Morning shine, thank you very much, saying uh, Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, thank you for the support, but I'm, and if I read this, you can see on the screen already, I will get fully cancelled. Uh, not that I'm afraid of it, but the video is already demonetized because it's a sensitive topic. <laughs> I'm going to get another strike. Stop making it harder for me. Uh, there are some sane people in the live chat, by the way. For example, the chattering class is saying, you are beautiful. Facts are important. <laughs> Thank you for the support, by the way. Uh, what else is going on with you guys? Please tell me you're going to St. George's. 
I'm not just going, I'm speaking at St. George's Day. So yeah, well, Tutti TV will be there. Be there, everybody. When is it? 23rd? 23rd. 23rd of April, 3 o'clock, Whitehall, Westminster. And uh, we're going to cause trouble. <laughs> we're going to show unity, solidarity with this country and the people of this nation. Even if you're not Anglo-Saxon, come and support the English. Eula's <clears throat> um, Karen is still talking. Shush your moth. What, why do you have a problem with my moth? What, do you hate moths? <laughs> Shush your moth. <laughs> I think there's a letter there's a, 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 like, missing in that word. I wonder what it is. <laughs> I think it's a U. <laughs> Shush your moth. Um, okay, so beware of this. Uh, the this, the stabilization caused by those who are paid by external regimes, bringing it about divisions and stability in the name of those so-called noble, uh, no, noble uh, uh, concepts, beliefs, and values. This is exactly what I've been warning, going back to what's been happening in Tel Aviv, or what's been happening in our countries, uh, in the West in general. It's the same thing. You've got Qatari money all around London. We've got the Iranian regime infiltrating. Same problem in, the, in, in Tel Aviv with all the protesters, all the liberal lefties. They are literally causing division and we are falling for it. <clears throat> John says, I told you she ain't a journalist. She can't even effing spell. <laughs> no, she has a problem with my moth. I have a pet moth in the flat. She, um, now, Euless Karen, who's a journalist, it's a, it says you, you are, but literally spelled it like a, like a Gen Z. You are. You're unfunny. I, I've, I have a feeling Euless Karen might not actually be a real journalist. I just have a feeling she might not be. She might not even be a she. I don't want to assume Karen gender. She might be a butterfly. That's why she hates moths. What am I talking about? Um, <laughs> Chunky Monkey says moth lives matter. <laughs> First we had to deal with uh, Alan for a few weeks on this live stream with all the trolls. Now we have to deal with moths. Anyway, before I go completely crazy... Um, I would like to say a thank you. We have so much to talk to you guys about today. Um, I'm going to send, by the way, on, on the community post tab that we have on the channel, I'm going to post some pictures of the new studio. I'm going to give you some sneak peek preview. And or if you follow me on X or Twitter, I'm going to post it on that as well. Uh, then we're going to come back and talk to you guys about what's been going on between Mexico and Ecuador. And of course, the deputy leader of the Labour Party, Angela Reyna, who is going, going to be facing criminal conviction. <laughs> Yeah, and they're going to be forcing, uh, forming a new government, by the way. And we're going to talk about uh, the, the anti ULES protests uh, that happened uh, in London uh, and near Sadiq Khan's house. It didn't go too well as the police decided to arrest everybody. And then we're going to also go to Canada for a bit and talk to you guys about the conservative leadership in Canada who are completely destroying Justin Trudeau, Justin Castro Trudeau. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. You've been watching 2CTV, I'm Maya 2C, and we are the media.